Right, moving right on then to chapter 16 in this great book of uh, Revelation. 16 verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. That leaves no doubt as to where the wrath's going. Not going to heaven. It's going right here to earth. Verse 2, and the first went and poured out his vial. He dumped it spot upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous, grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. That um, sore is an ulcer. It's that burning fever that we read of in the Song of Moses. Men that disregard the Word of God and go counter to everything God ever taught. And certainly they end up with it and deservedly so. Verse 3, And the second poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. It's, it's a little bit difficult for you to understand if you don't understand what the sea is here. And we're speaking spiritually. I want you to look at chapter 17. Look ahead, chapter 17, verse 15. I want you to know what the sea is, what the water is. It's important. It's the same water that the great harlot rides upon. God interprets this for you, so don't you mess with it. It needs no further interpretation. Listen to it. Verse 15 of chapter 17. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, in other words, the waters or the sea are the people that he poured that uh, cup of wrath out upon. And I assure you that um, it, would, uh, it was turned to blood, I guess. Now, back back up, if you would, to chapter 11, so that you know God, God makes these things real clear that you can understand. What did the two witnesses do when they appeared on earth? Chapter 11, verse 6. These, speaking of the two witnesses, have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters. Don't forget what waters are. To turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And so it is. So we see that the God's elect have that trump card way before the fact because the witnesses come in 1,290 days, whereas Satan only has 42 months, 42 moons. A moon is only 29 and a half days, let's say. That's about 10 days short overall, meaning the two witnesses are here before the false Christ comes to direct for the Holy Spirit to come through, through the great lights of the seven-stemmed menorah candles that will light the world at that time when they are delivered up. So you see, the waters being the people, when the truth is poured out on them, that wrath of God, there'll be a lot of people waking up at that time and to their astonishment, to consider themselves to be Christian, to love the Lord and worship the first supernatural entity that appeared on earth claiming to be Jesus because he could do lightning come from heaven right in front of them, great miracles, greatest revival I've ever seen in my life. And I believed it. Why would you be so stupid when God warned you in chapter 13 it was going to happen? How could you be so stupid or, or forgetful when he warned you in Luke uh, 21 in Mark 13 and in Matthew 24 exactly all seven things that would transpire detail by detail by detail 
and and when when it finally happens, you're shocked and surprised. Well, I sit on that church pew, and the preacher didn't say anything. Did you read God's word with understanding? That's why He sent the letter to you. I'm not talking down to anyone, and I'm not scolding anyone. But I love the brethren, and I don't want you deceived. I want you to study God's Word to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the Word of God where God can use you rather than you have to be abused, misled, used by Satan because of ignorance. <clears throat> Our Father is so very good to us. Let's go with the next verse in chapter 16, 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood. Here, even the thirds poured, I mean, the people getting it one right after the other. Boom, boom, boom. Do you know something? There'll be a lot of them still wrestling with it. They won't even know what's happening. They'll just consider it hard times, things going bad. Why doesn't God help us? He sent you a letter telling you exactly what you should do to, pre to prevent that. It's too bad you didn't read it. It's too bad you didn't study it so that you would know and be prepared and be under His wing where those things would have none effect on you whatsoever. But on you, quite the contrary, you would have the almighty blessings of the living God. Verse 5, And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be. He's coming because thou hast judged thus. And God's judgment is always accurate. God's judgment is always fair and, and uh, equitable, and you can count on it. That's why when you do what's right, even though you mess up occasionally and repent, you're in good shape. You can trust Him. That's what faith is, is loving Him, knowing that He cares. You do not want these things to fall upon you. And there's no excuse for it when all you have to do is love Him and obey Him. Because He is righteous, and what He's doing, even with the cup, is righteous. Verse 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and Thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now, who, who is this? Who has shed the blood of saints? Have you never, this is why he sent you this letter. Have you never read in Matthew chapter 23? Matthew chapter 23, uh, let's just take a moment and let's cover what he's talking about here. He says in Matthew 23 concerning the Kenites, okay. He said um, in verse 31, Matthew 23, Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. You did it. Well, who is he talking about? Well, let's read it. You fill up the measure of your father's lower case, not our father. 33, who are they? Listen, ye serpents. Ye generation, the word in the Greek is offspring. You offspring of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? They can't, unless they were totally to repent and become children of God. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you, may come all, how much? All the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcaius, which he slew between the temple and the altar. Now, from the blood of Abel, let's see then, what is this generation of serpents? Well, who slew Abel? Well, Cain did. Why? Because he was a generation of viper of the viper, of the head snake, Satan. He said, you're guilty of it coming out the gate. 
And don't worry, God is certainly aware of it. And when, when they destroy those that God sent, God makes great mark of it, and this is where they get their comeuppance. If the tares do not change, their, their um, gift is certainly in the cup, and they will enjoy it to the fullest degree because God is a God of vengeance. He's jealous and his wrath is ready, especially for those that led his children astray, those that would take advantage of a situation, and certainly the Kenites have. This is why our Father's word is so important and yet at the same time so very simple if you ferret out, if you winnow it in the harvest of truth and absorb it as you harvest that truth from God's Word, that each piece falls in place, bringing the simplicity of Christ's teachings into the very buds of your mind, whereby you're not deceived. It's ever so important. Don't to miss the Shepherd's it. Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour back in our Father's Word, Book of Revelation. The unveiling, the uncovering, meaning God wanted you to know and understand what is written here. It has to do, you know, he does the book of uh, Revelation by numbers. And if you can count from one to seven, you can pretty well understand the book of Revelation. We are now, inasmuch as the seals have been delivered in the minds of God's elect, the thing that is simply to say, the knowledge that they are to po possess to be able to not be deceived by the wickedness and the lies that come into this world in the end times. The trumps, of course, we covered all seven of those, and the seventh one is still kind of sounding. Is uh, Then w they execute the command. When a trump sounds, I mean, action happens. And of course, the vials are the wrath of God. And it's... The, the wrath being the last. However, they synchronize at 666, the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial. That's Satan's number. And that's when Antichrist as Satan appears on this earth. That's what you want to be ready for. We've covered three vials in the great 16th chapter of the great book of Revelation. We're going to pick it up with verse 7 in Revelation 16, and we'll get ready for that fourth vial. It is different in such a way that I'll explain as we go along. Verse 7 reads, and I, heard, and I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Here is an angel right from the altar of God, which right under that altar are those that have shed their blood on the earth and washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb asking, how long, Father, before you take vengeance on us, on those on earth? God said, you just rest just a little season till your fellow workers accomplish what they must in the end times. That's that same altar. And here he sends this one forth in verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now, out of all the, all the uh, plagues, the cups of wrath have an equivalent in the plagues that happened in Egypt, except this one. This is unique, to have one poured upon the sun. And this is what makes it ever so different, and this is unique to the very end times. And you'll remember back in 11.5, and I'm going to turn there. I'll read it to you. You're not going to have it. Chapter 11, verse 5. What, what about this sun 
And what about this fourth vial? Chapter 11, verse 5, concerning the two witnesses. And if any man will hurt them, the two witnesses, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So we have a special power here from on high, and that power, inasmuch as God is a consuming fire, is we speak of a dimension that man knows very little about, but it is something that is unique to the end times. And it is a power that is the Holy Spirit working through the two witnesses. And then you can maybe even see a little deeper and clearer into Zechariah chapter 4, where the menorah, the seven-stemmed candle, which are symbolic of the 7,000 of God's elect, with the two witnesses standing on each side, and the Holy Spirit, without the aid of man, the Spirit, which is the oil, flows into those lamps without man's help, meaning God does it. <clears throat> so God is totally in control at this time of that power, and that might, and when, when you read a verse like that and these people that get weak hearts and tremble and fear, what are you afraid of? My goodness, Father, make, he gives us such weaponry, such strength and power over all of our enemies with the truth. How, how could you dread or worry about anything? Think about it. Returning then to verse 9, again, that is very unique, did not happen in Egypt. The only, the only vial that did not have a double or a second witness, and it pertains strictly to the end times. Verse 9, and men were scorched with great heat. Do you know what that heat is? It's the truth, God's Word, and blaspheme the name of God which had hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. You know, inasmuch as the two witnesses have that power, guess what Satan ultimately will have done to them, and God will allow it. They'll be killed in the streets of Jerusalem, those two, to prove a point that God conquers death. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And in three days, exactly three and a half days, those two rise and Christ returns. And, but people, they party around that place where uh, the two witnesses are lying out open, where people can see. They're going to say, we're not going to put this one and these two in a tomb because we don't want the word said that they resurrected. We're going to watch them as they lie there and decay and the paralyzing fear that comes over them when Christ resurrects them and they stand and Christ returns at that moment. Boy, do knees start popping, do backs start bending, and every knee shall bow to the Lord Jesus Christ at that time. But until that time, the truth, though the two witnesses lay it out with power and wonders, they still blaspheme the true God because they think they're worshiping God when they worship the false one. Being misled is a terrible thing, and it runs deep. And once they're zeroed in on it, to change their minds was, is guaranteed by this very verse, 9, that it would be quite a difficult thing, that not even the two witnesses could accomplish that, but three and a half days the Lord does. Verse 10 to continue. And the fifth angels poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. You'll remember the, the church in Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to turn there. In chapter 2, um, and the angel to the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name. That is where the martyr was and lived. 
that seed of Satan can be dented very easily, dented with the truth. And then God would continue on in that 17th verse and said, hey, I've got a, a, a new name for you and I've got a white stone with your name written on it. And that stone, naturally, is the true manna from God, our rock, our truth, that you are not deceived. I like to think of the fifth seal and, and um, even the fifth vowel and the fifth trump as times of learning. Because the sixth trump is too late to learn. Because the false Christ will already be here. But you must ob observe these teaching fifth seals, fifth trump, fifth vial, to know and to understand the Word of God, a time of teaching so that you're not deceived. And you see the, the hard-headedness, as God would say in the great book of Ezekiel chapter 2, they're stiff-necked, they will not listen to you, but tell them anyway, give the truth. And so it is. Father is always on the throne, He's right there, and those that have passed on are with him that overcame. And they're waiting for that time when we ourselves will, um, will continue until all of God's enemies, all of Christ's enemies are made his footstool. He uses his elect to accomplish that. And they have nothing to worry about, the powers that God gives us. Next verse, please. Verse 10, 11. And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. They simply will not repent. And uh, unrepentance, there's no forgiveness. And if the whole world is whoring after him, you can then begin to understand why we need the millennium. Because of misguided, misdirected souls. Verse 12 and the sixth angel poured out his vial, here comes Satan, here comes the Antichrist, his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, you want, you want to watch this real carefully. The Hebrew is a little more specific. It says uh, the kings that come from, from the... Uh, uh, rising morning, which that's where the sun comes up in the morning. These are not um, these are not necessarily men of the earth. This is the it can be the very ten kings that Satan brings with him. And who is this son of the morning? None other than Satan himself. And what is the Euphrates? The Euphrates is the river that runs between Israel and Babylon between truth and confusion. Which side do you want to be on? It is dried up, meaning there's no room anymore for confusion. And the waters are simply the people. And when the truth hits them, they've got nowhere to stand. But that way is prepared. Verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's the Antichrist. And out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, all one and the same. All one and the same. Do you remember back in chapter 9 what the three were? That uh, Verse 18. By these three was the third part of men killed, deceived, spiritually dead. By the fire, that's one. By the smoke, two. And by the brimstone, three, which issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouths. Now, what does that mean? They're lying to you. That's why you have to understand God's word that pulls you away where you do not listen to the lies of men and the traditions of men that make void the word of God, the real truth. This is a critical thing at this time, in this generation especially, to have the truth, to know the truth, and to hang on to that truth. The truth will never fail you. The truth will never let you down. 
God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. And how precious it is to have he, the Father himself, pulling for you, having, having you in mind, whereby you know these three things. They're, in other words, what does it amount to simply? Oversimplification, perhaps, but they're blowing smoke, okay? lying to you. And you've got to learn to recognize a lie when you see it out of the mouth of the false Christ and hear the, the urge and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the true Christ, and His teachings. That's why He sent you this letter, so that you couldn't be deceived. You're foolproof in His Word. Verse 14, For they are the spirits of devils, Working miracles, oh, it's so impressive. My, my, I've never seen such a thing. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth. Now, these are ten kings that are on earth in the one world system. They're not the kings that Satan brings with him. Of the whole world who to gather them to the battle of the great day of the Lord, of, of God Almighty. And, and so it is that that great day is coming. And, and Satan ushers them right on into it. You know, uh, the sad part about this is, is uh, many that claim to be Christian are going to be deceived and walk right into this trap, thinking they're about to, uh, Satan's about to, as false Christ is about to load them up and fly them out. They're going to rapture right out of here. Blowing smoke, friend. Do you recognize smoke? I mean, right up to the great day of God Almighty. Don't be on the wrong side. Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Well, when does a thief come? When you don't expect it. If you think Christ is already here, you're sure not looking for him to come. You've already accepted this false Christ that's here, thinking it is Jesus. See that you don't make that mistake. And naturally, if you think Christ is already here, naturally he comes as a thief because you weren't expecting him. What a shock. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What a shame that would be. What, well, what, is, what is your clothing? You'll find out in Revelation chapter 19, that uh, your righteous acts weave the linen that make your apparel in heaven. You're not going to have any. If you're worshiping Satan, if you're whoring after him and his one world government, you don't have any righteous acts. So there you stand. And naturally, you put the gospel armor on in place pleasing God and weaving that righteous weave and wear those beautiful ropes that many that are already at the altar of God have washed theirs in the blood of the Lamb and be well attired because you're a servant of the living God, not the fake, not the smoke blower. Verse 16, And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And a lot of people say, well, he's, he's talking about the valley of um, Megiddo. No, he's not. What is R in the Hebrew tongue? It, it can be city. Or it can be hill. But what, it, what is Megiddo? You, you have to know the meaning, the full translation, rather than the transliteration. Megiddo means the gathering place of the crowd. Have you ever read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, two, uh, verse uh, 4? I'll say that again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. For the son of perdition shall sit in the holy place on Mount Zion, claiming to be God, and gather all his little people to him right in the holy city, claiming to be God. That's where they gather. That's where the crowd gathers. That's why it's written in Zechariah chapter 14 that when Christ does return, his feet hit the Mount of Olives and prepare a way right to the east gate, right across Kedron and up to the east gate. 
and takes over the town. Okay. Uh, what, what a wonderful time to live in this time but how easy it would be if you did not study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of God to fall in the wrong camp. You don't want to go there, my friend. How blessed it is to have the gospel armor and the truth to where smoke blowers and liars have none effect to you. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. The three weapons all came from their mouth, which means lies. Do words harm you and hurt you? Do you allow the enemy's words or what comes out of his mouth to hurt you? I hope not. I don't care what comes out of his mouth. He's a fake, a failure, and a dead man walking. It, you, you never, if, if that's all the weapons they've got, they will be a bunch of pushovers when it comes to spiritual combat. Because we, they can work all their little parlor tricks, miracles, but God has given us power over them. Don't ever be afraid to use it. Well, what is it called? Truth. And they will be gathered at Armageddon. <clears throat> and they will be finished there. And instantly, all are changed into spiritual bodies. And what a sad awakening for some people when they realize what they've done. You know, there is, I get no pleasure from feeling for people that are really trying to do what's right, but they're being not taught. Not taught this letter from God. <clears throat> I mean, really trying to be a Christian. And then to wake up that day and find out they had loved Satan had, had made contracts with Satan. You know, there's nothing worse a Christian can do than to, to fall in love with the wrong Messiah and miss the wedding. Because only virgins, spiritually speaking, will take part in that wedding. If you're deceived, you're out. You're not going to take part in it. You're, if, if you even succeed at all, it will be a thousand years later in the second resurrection. So that's why this is ever, ever so very important at this time is to know the truth and to teach the truth so we can save out of the fire as many people as we can, giving them unction and knowledge to know the false Christ comes first and his message is, I'm going to rapture you out of here. You want to be real careful. Satan is why, this is why Jesus would teach in, in this, a real man, set of manuscripts, a real set of King James, not one of these later versions that the Kenites have changed. It'll say in Ezekiel chapter 13, I'm against those that teach my children to fly to save their souls. And I'll wretch them back from their hands. Not to salvation, but to correct. Tough love. That's what the millennium is. And what a thousand year period it will be. So Armageddon is coming. You can, you can rest assured that it will. And you know, um, you want to set it in your mind. What deceives many people? Satan knows that if he can make people think that the world is going to be a holocaust, the end of it, disruption, then you better know how Antichrist comes in. As it's written in the eighth chapter of Daniel, he com comes in prosperously and peacefully. As it's written in Daniel chapter 11, verse 22 and 3, he comes in prosperously he comes in peacefully, not war. Lovey, 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 revival, revival, revival. Bring your brother, bring your children. Let's convert them. Let's convert them to the hellbound wagon of rapture right out of here. Make sure you don't get on board, my friend, because God sent you this letter warning you and so that you would not be deceived that you would re remain true 
and faithful to the living God, weaving that righteous, those righteous acts and linen to be a teacher with Christ in the millennium that could help others even then as it is written in this great book of Revelation, as well as the closing chapters of Ezekiel, which have to do with the millennium. Verse 17, here it comes. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And certainly it is. That's when Christ returns. Do you, know, do you know how long it's going to take our Heavenly Father to get things back under control? Ten minutes, five probably at the most. There'll be a little shaking around, a little earthquake. Well, how long does an earthquake last? Eh, nanoseconds. Usually never over a minute. God has a way of getting people's attention real quick. So you, you want to be prepared for that also. Do I have to worry about that? No, you don't. He's not angry at you. None of these cups of wrath are poured out on those he loves. God does not punish those he loves. He embraces them. He protects them. And you might say, well, in as much as the very unique vial, which is from the sun, fire, least of all, God wanted you not to be afraid of him, which, who is a consuming fire. So, he would in the book of Daniel give you the Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He would put them in a furnace heated seven times hotter than necessary, throwing in. And there Nebuchadnezzar saw, he said, how many men did we throw in there? I see four. I see those three and I see the Son of God walking with them. Their clothes weren't even singed. Their hair was not singed. Because in that dimension, God takes care of his own and they're not hurt. So you have nothing to fear. You can be right in the middle of this. God's wrath is not at you. It's at the enemy and those that would be deceived by it. So that great voice from the very throne itself, it is done. Verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. That had to be a pretty tough one. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of his wine of the furiousness of his wrath. This is the cup Jesus prayed that could pass from him. That, Father, is there some other way that we can do this without pouring this cup out on them? It's going to hurt. This is that moment of truth when they realize they've been had. Now, Many might say, well, aren't a lot of people going to be, how could you possibly be right in the middle of a hailstorm of 180 pounds apiece, 110 to 180, according to which manuscript you wish to go by, without being hurt? Well, what happens at the seventh trump? I hope I've taught you well. What happens the instant the seventh trump sounds? You've read it, you've covered it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. In the, an instant, in the wink of an eye, at the seventh trump, all are changed into spiritual bodies. It has no effect on earthquakes, hailstones, or anything else when you're changed into that beautiful spiritual body of our Heavenly Father. And um, allowing, talk about a mystery and a miracle appearing to people when they see the beauty of the true Messiah and the miracle of being in a spiritual body without pain, without age, without disease, without sickness, even though they may have a soul that's going to hell, 
to be in that spiritual body and to see the glory of God. And no, they, it's not theirs. They've still, though they have placed on a spiritual body, their soul is still mortal, which in the Greek tongue means liable to die. And very likely they will if they continue in their way. Verse 20, and every island fled away and the mountains were not found. I mean, it's a good shake and mountains are nations. You're not going to have another nation because you know why? No nations all the way around, no one world system. Why? Because we have one king and one Lord and he is king of kings and Lord of lords, period. That's it. 21, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Now, like I said, it's according to whose manuscript, 110 to 180 pounds. That's, destructi that's destruction built for a moment in time. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. Nothing ever like it. You know. how, how how desperate some must be and how they must dislike truth and Almighty God, that at a time like this they would not realize His mastery, His control, and His Word. You see, it is not like He slipped up on anyone. It is not like He tricked someone. It is not like God deceived someone. It's written, I'm going to do it. It is done. And you know something? You can count on it. That's exactly what he's going to do. And if you do not wish to be under the weight of that anger of God, that wrath of God, then you want to come out of confusion. That means come out of Babel. Babel is nothing but Babylon and Babel is confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And you will find that peace of mind when you stay in His Word and when you live His Word, bear His Word, and join in to those that have the victory over the beast, over His number, over His name, singing the song of Moses, whereby you are not deceived and have preeminence over all the wickedness of this world loving our Heavenly Father, being pleased with His countenance, and, and uh, seeing that God does on that day of vengeance, He takes control, and in that day of vengeance, avenges His children on the wickedness of this world. Now, next chapter is a very important chapter. Don't miss the next lecture. God Himself interprets many things in the next chapter. And when God interprets something, don't you let man touch it. It needs no further interpretation. When God says a thing means a certain thing, you'd better accept it, for it's your Father speaking. Don't miss the next lecture, chapter 17. All right, bless your heart, you listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. 
And there we are, back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. Hey, that number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, all over Canada. If the spirit moves, you got a question, you share it. Once you do that, please never ask a question pertaining to a certain reverend, denomination, or organization. We do not judge people. God is judge. He doesn't need your help. And um, in that... Um, we appreciate him, love him for that. Uh, it is your right to discern spiritually who you should fellowship with, who you should study with, and so forth. That's a beautiful gift from God is spiritual discernment, to know a wicked spirit when you see one. That's a gift from God. Those of you that listen by short wave around the world, um, it's uh, the, your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Always a pleasure. Now, a prayer request, you don't need the number or the address. Why? God knows what you're thinking. You're unique. Your DNA is different than anyone else. Why? God wanted someone just like you. I have no idea why in the world he would want someone like you, but he's got you, okay? And and loves you. So let him know that you love him in return. Won't you do that? He wanted you to love him. He created you for his pleasure. So see that you give him pleasure by returning his love. And um, we, we thank him for that. All right, let's go to his throne, Father. Around the globe we come. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father. Touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and question time. We're going to go with Louise from Georgia. You said in your lecture on Revelation 11.3 that the two witnesses would be here on earth 10 days before Satan arrives. Did I understand you correctly? If so, is there scripture to tell us the witnesses time of arrival? No, there isn't. The reason, let me explain. The reason God gives Satan's prophecies always in moons, that's night, okay? And, and a moon is not a full month. A moon is only about 29 and a half days, I'll say, just give or take. Whereas a solar is 30 days, so it falls short. So Satan only has, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 4, 42 moons, whereas the two witnesses have 1,290 days. And in 90 days, that would give you a full branch of 30-day periods, which would be almost 10 days longer. But when we shorten that down to five months, it wouldn't quite be 10 days, but they're still here first. God always takes care of his own. Uh, Marjorie from Kansas. In your opinion, do you think preachers like this uh, know the truth? Um, and you're speaking, let me see who you're speaking about. Um, okay, one verse revolving revs, that's what you're talking about. But don't teach it because most people don't want to hear it. And will they have to answer at judgment? This preacher said many times he wanted to sit at the right hand of God. Well, that place is already taken, unfortunately, at the right hand of God. That's Christ's seat. So I'm afraid he's thinking pretty tall. Um, I, I don't judge people, and I, I, you know, but I, I'm glad that God brought you out. Come out of confusion. Listen to the God's word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Um, God, judgment begins at the pulpit, so naturally preachers are going to be judged first. And if one truly knew the truth and refused to teach it, I would really hate to be in his shoes. Uh, if they are ignorant of it, then God kind of winks at ignorance in a sense. But um, uh, if they know better, that's a different story. Wayne from Georgia. In Genesis chapter 6, verses 2 through 6, when he says, sons of God, I have been told he was actually talking about the daughters of Cain. Is this correct? Please explain. No, it is not. Okay. The sons of God are fallen angels, Nephilim. And the daughters that are spoken of are the daughters of Adam, Eth Ha'adam in the Hebrew tongue. And 
it would be through the daughters of Eth Adam that Christ would come, and Satan was trying to destroy that bloodline, whereby there could not be a perfect generation as Noah had, which simply means in the Hebrew tongue a, a perfect pedigree, meaning he was true Eth Adam. And um, so that's why Satan wanted those particular daughters and no doubt encouraged the fallen angels, the Nephilim, to seek them out. And hey, they about accomplished it. Because when you read in that Genesis 6, Noah is the only family that he, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives were still perfect. That is to say, had not intermixed with the, with the um, sons of God, that is to say, the hybrids, producing hybrids, Geber. Okay, Tony from Virginia, were dinosaurs on the ark? No, no, no. Dinosaurs were extinct long before the ark came to be, okay? They were destroyed, many of them long even before the catabo, which was approximately 14,000 years ago. Brenda from North Carolina, does Arnold believe in the Holy Trinity? I teach the Word of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit over and over and over and over. I don't know why people like to listen to fruitcakes on internets, okay, that would say, you know, and anybody would be pretty stupid if they heard me teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse and, and uh, not think that I believed in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That would that'd be a stretch, wouldn't it? But then idiots like to play games, so be that as it may. Tammy from Ohio. When we pass away, what are we doing? What are the people on the bad side of the gulf and the people on the good side of the gulf? What, what, well, what, what are they doing? Well, they're, they're waiting. They have no choice. The ones on the good side are rejoicing. Jesus kind of told you that because immediately... Uh, Lazarus was in the bosom or uh, embracing Abraham and uh, happiness was there. Where on the other side, boy, they were in pain. Why? They didn't make it and they knew it. They knew that they, they could see God, their true father, and knew they, he had missed the boat. And I'm, I'm going from uh, Luke chapter 16. And that's the bad side. And um, uh, so naturally, it is even said he was in hell. It, only, only in mind and thought was he in hell. It's hell when you know you're going to hell. But then there's good news even with that. It is possible that in the millennium, people will have an opportunity to learn the truth. And the truth will set them free if they stick with it and love the Father. David from Illinois, that's not a second chance because because of what is taught in the world today, there's a lot of people that don't have a prayer of a chance. David from Illinois, is the soul and the spirit the same? No, they're not. Your soul, I like to translate it as yourself, regardless of which body you're in, it is your very being. Your spirit is your intellect, it's your thought process. Just as God has a Holy Spirit, Satan has a wicked spirit. And just as any man or woman or child has a spirit, I choose to use my spirit to put out into the ether waves to try to teach people the straight path to the throne of God. Now, many men can take that same spirit, their spirit, and use it to beguile people or to mislead people. But so therefore you have to spiritually discern. That's why I said earlier that spiritual discernment is a gift from God to spot a spirit you don't want anything to do with before it affects you. It is nothing that man must be afraid of. But to answer your question, your spirit is your intellect, your soul is yourself, regardless of whether you're in flesh body or spiritual body. Uh, Valerie from Georgia, 
Where should, I where should I find a Bible verse that will help me make the best of a job and a manager that I don't like? How should I pray for a good job? I am thankful I have one. Well, that's, that's good, and thank the Father for it. Um, and I'm, I want to give you 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Okay. Read it real good and real slow. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And um, he's, uh, he's paying your salary, and you're thankful for that job. I know you know your rights. Maintain them, but at the same time, be a good employee and your reputation will precede you and you'll find a better job somewhere else. How do you pray for it? God is so natural. He's supernatural. Talk to him. It's just like this. If you want to pray for a new job, say, Father, I want a new job. It's a little pressure here. Or you might ask him at the same time to soften your present boss a little bit whereby you could get along with him a little better. Pray, tell him, just talk to him, that's it. And always do it in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ, which is to say, you're a Christian and that is your credentials. And when you ask the Father. Cor Corey from, Corey rather, Carrie from Oklahoma. Since we know that Satan comes first and that he, Satan, is a cheap imitation of Christ, will Satan have a John the Baptist, so to speak, preparing the way for the Antichrist? And would it be political and financial? Thank you and, and all your staff. You are so welcome. The imposter can use any method he chooses. He will use all four of the hidden dynasties, and you've only mentioned two of them. He will use education. He, he will use um, financial, he will use political, and last but not least, he will use religion. So therefore, um, anything that works for him, he will use. And, and is there an imitation? He always prepares the way. Satan is very shrewd, he's very sharp. If Satan knows that Elijah must come before the true father returns, uh, then he'll see to that also. But that also would be a fraud. Jay from Georgia. Uh, greetings and greetings return. Please tell me where the name Jehovah is in the Holy Bible because I cannot find it. Well, you can't find it because it's not there. Okay. It, you have, um, the, his, our father's name in the manuscripts is Yahweh. Okay. It, it is, uh, that is the Hebrew pronunciation. It comes from the etymology of the statement, I am that I am, Hebrew, Iya asha Iya. And, and um, within that is that sacred name. There are no J's in the Hebrew alphabet. Therefore, you cannot derive uh, that particular name from the manuscript. God uses other titles such as um, Yahweh Jori, that is God that provides. Uh, he has several titles and, and uh, he stands by each of them. And there are manuscripts that um, refer to him by certain titles as El, E-L, that, that is the word God and there is Adonai, and, uh, and on it goes. So, but never, um, never will you find it Jehovah. It's not scriptural. But, the, you know, that's what some people teach, and so it is. I would never judge them. Caroline from North Carolina. Someone wrote in, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Then who are the spirits that are lingering? Um, I'm curious to hear your answer. Well, there, the spirits that linger can be good or bad. Okay. The Holy, for every negative, there is a positive. You have Satan's evil spirit, but at the same time, you have Christ's Holy, God's Holy Spirit. And uh, that's why you want to always choose that that is from the Father, the true Father. And you do not need the lingering spirits of anything else. 
they are out there and you do not have to be afraid of them because God has given us power over them. Luke 10 verses 19 through about 24, 23. So you have nothing to worry about. We have that power, but well, how do we derive it? In his name. When, when you order a negative spirit out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ, it has no choice other than to depart. Uh, Don from California, I thought I heard you say on Friday the 19th, Christ comes three and a half years after Antichrist. Is this the three and a half years that will be shortened to five months? That is correct, okay? And the two witnesses have 10 days more. Well, basically, I went through that earlier, so we won't go there again, okay? When it's shortened, everything is shortened. But, but the formula still stays, stays the same. If you really want to be specific, then uh, understand exactly how long a moon is, even down to the hour, and figure it from that. And uh, versus deus, we are children of light. We always go by a solar calendar. This is why sometimes our Passover doesn't align with somebody's Passover that goes by moons of the night. Because we count the new year at the spring equinox. And um, exactly the, and 14 days later. Rick from West Virginia. I was at a church service. It was said that these were two spirits, the Holy Ghost, which is of Christ, known as the Comforter. Then there is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. Doesn't this destroy the Godhead? Nobody destroys the Godhead, okay? But, Rick, what would you do with the name then? What would you do with the scripture? Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. What does it say? A virgin shall conceive and will bear a son, and you shall call him Emmanuel, which is to say God with us. Now, if Jesus would teach, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And if God would say coming out the gate in Genesis, let us create man in our image, including himself. God saying, in my image will I create him being Savior. So if you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father, and you do not have two spirits, it's the same spirit. Nobody will ever destroy the Godhead. Uh, Claudette from South Carolina. Were the Ten Commandments written for today's Christians? Absolutely. But... You want to go by what Christ said about it? What did Christ say in Matthew? He said, I don't change one jot or tittle. Iota in the Greek, tittle in the Hebrew, meaning a dot that will make the difference in the sound of the letter A from A to A. I don't even change the sound of one letter. But I came to fulfill it. So, um, some of them he fulfilled. He did away with the statutes of blood ordinances because his blood was shed one time only for any and ever and all. Regarding the fourth commandment, when should we observe the Sabbath? Have you never read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, that Christ became our Passover, which is our high Sabbath, that Christ is our Sabbath, and you had better Sabbath every day. Hebrews chapter 4 will let you know that Christ became our Sabbath, not some day of the week. You worship every day of the week. Um, Charlotte, Miss Charlotte from, um, Mrs. Charlotte from, trying to see from where here, don't know. Pastor Murray, love your program, glad you do. I want to ask a question. I am a born again Christian. You're a born from above Christian have been for 27 years. In the past several years, I almost died twice and am now on a, a, a something at a cancer, on a, I guess a system at a cancer clinic too. Certain Christians have told me I am sick because I lack faith 
for Jesus to heal me and that I could also have demons. I am very upset and I need to know what do you think. Don't, don't listen to quacks, okay? You, you, don't, you don't need to. What did Jesus say? We're, we have a polluted world at this time. From asbestos and many other things, we have cancers. And God didn't bring that on us. We brought it on ourselves. And, and it has nothing to do with faith, but there are miracle healings. And there is a reason for it. But Father also, um, Father also is putting together an army in heaven to come here and end this mess. So uh, wherever you are, his children are going to overcome. But don't let, don't let some quack tell you that you lack faith. I can tell by the way you write that you love the Lord so you could not be possessed of a demon spirit. So praise God, you just hang tough and thank him for the facts. You have, you have the program, okay? Here's the program for healing and ask God to help you and assist you in that. Guess what? We're going to pray with you. Um, Becky, I am 10 years old and where is Becky from? Becky's from Alabama. I'm 10 years old and in the fourth grade. I listen to your program every day with my parents. I have a question. I was wondering about, do our spirit bodies ever go to sleep? And if heaven is actually on earth, then where is hell or where Satan is held in bondage? Satan isn't in hell yet. Satan also is in paradise being held by Michael. Hell will not be until God creates the lake of fire, which we're going to get to in the 20th chapter of this. And then all, uh, hell does not, hell right now is grave. Have your parents help you go to your Strong's Concordance and you will find that hell is always suel in the Hebrew, which is grave. It will be supplica or in the Greek, it, many times it will be Gehenna. Gehenna is nothing but the garbage pit outside of Jerusalem. He calls that hell because it, it is a likeness. It burned and smoldered night and day and they would throw old dead animals on it and the maggots would work in and out. Not very pleasant, but that's why he described it so. that That's what hell, a statement of degradation. But the lake of fire is real and it does not happen until God is ready for it and God is a consuming fire. Becky, you're real... You're studying and hanging in there and you keep going. Proud of you. Out of time again. I love you because you enjoy studying God's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, though, God loves you for it. It makes His day. When you make His day, boy, is He going to make yours. He, why? He loves you. Uh, we are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God and He will always, always bless you. It is wonderful that we have a Father that truly cares, that loves us, that protects us, that will never leave us, that will never forsake us. He is your Father. Most important now, you stay in His Word. Hey, every day in His Word is a good, even, even with trouble, it's still a good day. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. 
We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.